Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Micah. You guys are rocking with me on Micah's Intellectual Corner. On today's episode, we are going to be diving into a, another Kurtz Gazette video. Finally learned how to say it. Uh, this one will be Stellar Engine. We are doing another recommendation video by Arnav Bizwa and Cobalt Fox. They both asked me to react to this video. I appreciate you guys for the recommendation. With that being said, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let's just go. Nothing in the universe is static. In the Milky Way, billions of stars orbit the galactic center. Some, like our Sun, are pretty consistent, keeping a distance of around 30,000 light years from the galactic center, completing an orbit every 230 million years. This dance is not an orderly ballet, more like a skating rink filled with drunk toddlers. This chaos makes the galaxy dangerous. Our solar neighborhood is constantly changing, with stars moving hundreds of kilometers every second. Only the vast distances between objects protect us from the dangers out there. But we might get unlucky in the future. At some point, we could encounter a star going supernova, or a massive object passing by and showering Earth with asteroids. If something like this were to happen, we would likely know thousands, if not millions of years in advance. But we still couldn't do much about it. Unless we move our whole solar system out of the way. Um, surprisingly, I'm pretty sure uh, most of you guys know this by now, but there was actually a uh, star it was actually a binary star, it was a, a red dwarf, brown dwarf, I believe, a binary star about 70,000 years ago. I think it was called Schultz's star. It pretty much came uh, close enough to, I think, I think one year, one light year away from us. So it was about like right outside of our Oort cloud, I want to say. And then uh, there's actually another star heading our way in about a million years it'll be here. Uh, but pretty much, um, I think that one's called Gliese something. But um, that one will be about 90 light days away from Earth. So that was literally chilling right there in the Oort cloud. Obviously, hopefully, hum uh, mankind will have figured something out by then. Obviously, this video is going to talk about it. So let's go and get right to it. To move the solar system, we need a stellar engine, a megastructure used to steer a star through the galaxy. It's the kind of thing that might be built by an advanced civilization with Dyson Sphere level technology that's thinking about their future millions of years ahead of time. But how do we possibly move the hundreds of thousands of objects in the solar system? The good news is we can ignore all of that. We only need to move the sun, all the other stuff is glued to it by gravity and we'll follow it wherever it decides to go. There are lots of ideas about what a stellar engine might look like and how it would work. We've picked two grounded in our current understanding of physics that could be built in theory. The simplest kind of stellar engine is the Shkadov thruster, a giant mirror. The Shkadov thruster, I'm pretty sure it's called, was actually proposed by Leonid Shkadov uh, in 1987 as a paper I think he proposed as a way to you know move the solar system in, in a way. But you know, this is 1987, so this way might be a little outdated in terms, but. You never know, you'll see what, what it looks like though. A giant mirror. It works on the same principle as a rocket. Like rocket fuel, the photons released as solar radiation carry momentum. Not a lot, but a bit. For example, if an astronaut turned on a flashlight in space, it would push them backwards very, very slowly. A stellar engine will work a little better than a flashlight because the sun produces a lot of photons. The basic idea of the Shkadov thruster is to reflect up to half of the solar radiation to create thrust and slowly push the sun where we want it to go. In order for the Shkadov thruster to work, it must be kept in the same place, not orbiting the sun. Although the sun's gravity will try to pull it in, it would be supported by radiation pressure, which props the mirror up. This means the mirror would have to be very light, made of micron-thin reflecting foil from materials like aluminium alloys. The mirror's shape is important. Would that be a good idea though, because of all the space debris in space, you know what I'm saying? Like, would that, wouldn't it get torn up? 
by something like, you know, the size of a, of a pebble or a rock going, you know, miles a second, you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe being made with a lot better stuff than I'm talking about, but let's see. Materials like aluminium alloys. The mirror's shape is important too. Enveloping the sun in a giant spherical shell wouldn't work because that would refocus light back to the sun, heating it up and creating all sorts of unpleasant problems. Instead, we use a parabola, which sends most of the photons around the sun and in the same direction, which maximizes thrust. To prevent accidentally burning or freezing Earth with too much or too little sunlight, the only safe place to build a Shkadov thruster is over the sun's pole. Also, I feel like if we build this, we won't be able to build a, a Dyson sphere either because, you know, it, it would be taking up too much of the room of it. How can we become a, a type 2 civilization if we can't harness that type of power to, you know, propel us into the space age, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, I digress. The safe place to build a Shkadov thruster is over the sun's poles. This means we can only move the sun vertically in the plane of the solar system and one direction in the Milky Way, which limits our travel options a bit. But that is basically it. For a civilization capable of building a Dyson Sphere, this is a relatively simple endeavor. Not complicated, just very hard to build. At full throttle, the solar system could probably be moved by about 100 light years over 230 million years. Over a few billion years, it gives us near complete control over the sun's orbit in the galaxy. But in the short term, this might not be fast enough to dodge a deadly supernova. That's yeah, because uh, I'm pretty sure a supernova ejects matter at like what 10,000 kilometers a, or yeah, about 10,000 kilometers or 6,000 miles per second. If that doesn't slow down at all, which I mean, there's a bunch of things that can slow it down. But if it doesn't slow down at all, then it, I think it takes like less than 10,000 years. It could take less than 10,000 years to get to us from like the closest uh, supernova that we know of that could go off. I think it would take like less than 10,000 years to get to us or something like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, if we're talking to try and move our solar system in, in the terms of millions of years, yeah, you can't, you know what I'm saying? So, all right, guys, let's go and get back into it, though. That's why we thought we could do better. So we asked our astrophysicist friend if he could design a faster stellar engine for this video. He did, and wrote a paper about it that's been published in a peer-reviewed journal. You can find it in our sources document. We're going to call our new stellar engine the Kaplan Thruster. It works a lot like a traditional rocket. Shoot exhaust one way to push yourself the other. It's a large space station platform powered by a Dyson sphere that gathers matter from the sun to power nuclear fusion. It shoots out a very fast jet of particles at nearly 1% the speed of light out of the solar system. A second jet pushes the sun along like a tugboat. The Kaplan thruster requires a lot of fuel, millions of... This looks like it would take like hundreds, if not even thousands of... Maybe thousands is pushing a little bit, but hundreds definitely to build this thing because obviously this thing is like the size looks like almost the size of a planet you know what i'm saying so this thing is freaking huge obviously the kaplan thruster requires a lot of fuel millions of tons per second to gather this fuel our thruster uses very large electromagnetic fields to funnel hydrogen and helium from the solar wind into the engine the solar wind alone doesn't provide enough fuel though and that's where the dyson sphere comes in Using its power, sunlight can be refocused to the surface of the sun. This heats small regions to extreme temperatures, lifting billions of tons of mass off the sun. This mass can be collected and separated into hydrogen and helium. The helium is burned explosively in thermonuclear fusion reactors. A jet of radioactive oxygen at a temperature of nearly a billion degrees is expelled and becomes our primary source of propulsion from our stellar engine. To prevent the engine from just crashing into the sun, it needs to balance itself. To do this, we accelerate the collected hydrogen with electromagnetic fields using particle accelerators and shoot a jet back at the sun. This balances the thruster and transfers the thrust of our engine back to the sun. 
In as little as a million years, this engine can move the sun by 50 light years, more than enough. But with the, we, we had the same problem though with the, uh, you know, the propulsion rocket burning any of the planets up. Because obviously if they just put it to where it doesn't burn any of the planets up, then can we only move in one direction again? I don't know. I'm probably not expanding my mind a little bit enough to think about it. But also, can you imagine the freaking upkeep on this damn thing? The maintenance, like whoever is doing the maintenance on this thing is a million, probably billionaire living right next to it, chilling. Like that is constant upkeep. And move the sun by 50 light years, more than enough to dodge a supernova. At full throttle, the solar system can be completely redirected in its galactic orbit in 10 million years. But wait, won't we use up the sun this way? Fortunately, the sun is so massive that even billions of tons of material will barely scratch the surface. In fact, this megastructure will actually extend our sun's life since lower mass stars burn slower, keeping the solar system inhabitable for many more billions of years. With a Kaplan thruster, we could turn the entire solar system into our spaceship. For example, by orbiting backwards in the galaxy and colonizing hundreds or thousands of stars as we pass by them. It may even be possible to escape the galaxy entirely and expand beyond the Milky Way. Stellar engines are the kind of machines built by civilizations thinking not in terms of years or decades, but eons. Since we know that our sun will die one day, a stellar engine could allow the far future descendants of humans to travel to other stars without... Yeah, because um, if we're talking about jumping galaxies, that's like... I mean, I feel like I'm pretty sure it takes like a rogue planet and stars like I want to say at least on the average billions. I'm talking on top of billions of years to jump from one galaxy to another going probably like millions of miles per second too. So, I mean, but that'd be a cool thing to do though, because then you wouldn't need a, a generational ship, you know what I'm saying? Because the Earth is our generational ship, so that that actually could work if you want to talk in terms of that, but yeah. Go ahead and finish this uh, video out though, guys. ...will die one day, a stellar engine could allow the far future descendants of humans to travel to other stars without ever having to venture into the terrifying dark abyss of interstellar space. Until we build a stellar engine, we're adrift and subject to the whims of the galactic sea. We may not like where it leads us. Maybe our descendants will set sail and become an interstellar species for millions of years to come. This was our last video for the year 2019. All right, guys, we'll go ahead and end it right there. Chris Gazette, uh, Stellar Engine. I believe on my Terraform Venus, I had said maybe they can make a stellar engine to move Venus into the habitable zone if it's not, you know, obviously close enough to us. I'm thinking that still could work if you gathered a big enough amount of material from the sun. Uh, you could probably do it and just and, but wouldn't have anything to blast on it you'd ha ha probably need like something to like hook on to the to the planet like gravity type wise where it just like hooks on to it and then can move it like that towards in space but anyway i digress i'm getting into it with that being said guys thank you guys so so much for joining me again on another episode of micah's intellectual corner please if you guys like the content don't forget to like comment and subscribe that being said i'm out Ooh!